What's up guys, this is Ready for War here. I'm doing a video on how to choose or how at least I choose or I think is the most is the best home defense handgun. And I'm not talking about uh rifles or shotguns, so just leave the comments on how you think that's the best out you can discuss what you think what your goals is on handguns, home defense. Um Anyway, to start off with, the most important factor of all when choosing a home defense handgun is reliability. It doesn't matter what brand you think's the best. There's plenty of videos about that. It's plenty of information about that. You can just pick your own. But to have rounds sent through the gun, have trust in it, and trust in it to be reliable. Um, if you have a gun that malfunctions all the time and it's a let's see a 500 or 50AE or whatever and it jams all the time and the only other thing you got is maybe a, or the gun won't fire sometimes uh, and the other thing you got is a 22 and it fires every time you've got thousands of rounds through it no failures um, then I would probably say 22 almost it's hard to say that but that's the truth. Um, you don't want to someone breaking your house. You go to use your gun and it don't work. Um, it's one reason why a lot of people use revolvers because they're known to have some of the less issues about them. Um, the second thing is trust. Is uh, trust in knowing your design. Um, you have to know your design. If you use a gun like a 1911 and you pick it up when someone's about to charge you or attack when they're breaking in your house maybe they got a uh, crowbar or something and you go to pull the trigger and you're wondering why it didn't go off and you have to sit there you, it was it's proven that most attacks happen within 20 something feet and it only take and most people can't even clear their holsters within 20 something feet and uh, when I took my carrying concealed training there was two trainers there that was instructors and they did all the courses for even cop training and some of them was cops some was military there's two guys doing it and the guy stood uh, i don't know they weren't olympic track runners or nothing one guy was kind of heavy set and dude stood you know 20 some feet away from him these people was training they tried their fastest and he rushed them and he got a hold of them before he could even clear his holster so you want to you don't want to have to wonder about things when you're going to use your gun. That's why a lot of people prefer Glocks because you don't have to think about it. But if you grew up around safeties and you're comfortable with them, then it becomes second nature to flip them off. But it does require training. Um, and you know, if it's a double action, know all that stuff about your gun. Know whether it's got one in your chamber. Chamber indicators are okay if you have time to check them, but if not, you need to learn either learn there's always one in the chamber or you never put one in the chamber it makes things simpler the way I see it um, you don't want to have to check your gun in a case because you just woke up your brain's not going to be thinking right you're going to be your adrenaline's going to be pumping crazy you're going to not even be using your head halfway because your adrenaline's going to be taking over and you're going to be sleepy um, anyway another thing uh, now I guess we'll go into caliber. Now this gun is loaded. It's what I pack most of the time and I can still carry and is one of the guns that set on my nightstand the most. Um, anyway, I prefer the 1911 design because it's just me. I love the pointability of it. Um, for instance, someone does rush up on you, and it's going to be close quarters. You can point and shoot really accurate. It's it comes natural. That's one reason why I like it. Now, other designs are just as good, and especially in the house, don't matter as much. Um, when it comes to caliber size, I prefer for a semi-automatic pistol the 45. That's the 45 ACP, but you know, this dude, it could change if I think more about it. But this is one of the best home defensive rounds, I think, because the 45 isn't known to be a penetrator. And for instance, for penetration, penetration power, 
uh, steel hounds, just the crappy ones you can buy at military surplus stores or whatever. My dad, somebody gave him a bunch of them that I don't know where they got them from or what have you, but it was just those same military surplus ones, um, steel pots. We we was testing out, we were shooting at it. We shot it with a 45 first. It put one hell of a dent in it. The guy who was wearing it, if there was somebody wearing it, wouldn't have been very happy. I would say it would probably have killed him just from the brain contusion he could have suffered but it didn't go through and then we shot with a 22 22 cleared both sides easily and some of you who hasn't tried this and at the time kind of made me think because I didn't think the 22 had enough power I was young but went straight through its velocity uh, 22 was at 1300 feet per second or 1400 and um, velocity is what um, makes the penetrate most of the penetration power and um, the, nine, uh, the 45 goes at uh, let's see uh, uh, 800 to 900 feet per second standard maybe more or less I can't remember the stuff right off my head a lot of them go up to a thousand you can get plus P's but I don't like plus P's um, and another reason why I picked 45 instead of like not the smaller calibers is knockdown. Not too many people can speak badly, or nobody can really knock the 45s knockdown. It's been proven over time. One shot, it's bullet placement a lot, but one shot is going to do a lot more damage than a 9 millimeter. Even with full metal jacket versus a 9 millimeter hollow point or whatever other defensive round you want to go with, it's going to do more. And uh, Anyway, 45 is a known uh, Kevlar level one. Will will stop this stuff. Um, you can use hollow points and make it a lot more less penetrative and a lot more damage. Because let's say you're say you're in your bedroom, someone breaks in. You're you got your gun, 357 Magnum. You're looking down the hallway. It's got hollow points in it. Someone comes around. Maybe they have a gun. You're waiting on them. You shoot. Goes through them. Goes through the wall kills or injures one of your kids um, now 45 we'll go through somebody but once it hits the drug but a lot of its energy is going to be gone um, if you're using it solely for home defense I suggest loading it with hollow points just make sure your gun is um, it will feed hollow points regularly I would, a lot of people say run a box through it I would at least run a box through it Prefer, preferably two or three just to test it out because I've shot many guns and on the first box they may have worked fine but on the second box they may have started jamming but um anyway and for a revolver you can get a 45 uh, a 45 revolver if you like 45 that much but a lot of times they might need moon clips or Full, uh, full clips you put in there, but 30 is special instead of a 357 because of the penetration. Um, and another reason why I say 45 or the other ones because I think it has the most knockdown for the less penetration qualities that you might get in other ones. That's the main reason why I picked the 45. You want to go for most knockdown in your home defense weapon with less penetration properties as po or quality as possible because um, it doesn't take much to go through drywall and you also even then you want to know your backstops but in case your mind isn't working right or you don't think about it you want you want it to be able to stop um, and the next thing is capacity um, although I really like the 1911 I prefer its features as the trade-off for me personally but one day I might switch to a Glock or XD. I'm eyeballing the new uh, Springfield Tactical. It's uh, the XDM Tactical or whatever. It's a 45 with a thumb safety on it. And I like that feature. And I'll probably end up getting it. I may even get that as my next gun. I'm not really sure. I have to look at capacity wise on it and everything like that. But I'm not saying 9mm isn't a bad. 9mm is a good home defense. It's not crazy. When it comes to over penetration, especially if you use hollow points, um, now it just doesn't have as much power. But you get capacity, and capacity is a good thing. Now, 
you could if you have a Glock, was it 33 round magazines? And they're good magazines, they're Glock made. Those um those is not bad to, you know, sit on your nightstand if you if you ain't got kids or what have you or your wife or girlfriend isn't scared of guns. It isn't gonna hurt anything to have it in there. If anything it'll help your life. Um I'm not really a fond of the governor or the uh, tourist judge. I'm not really getting into that, but load it up with uh, 45 long coats. Those are good home defense. We, the re one reason why I'm not, I don't like to spread out because someone's such such feet away from you, they might not uh, might not might not hurt them too bad. But the 45 long coat will do the job. Um, yeah, that I guess that about covers it for uh, choosing a home defense gun. Um, yep. I guess. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.